Hello everyone and welcome back to another watch me work video on my channel. So in this video I'm going to take off my nails that are on the left and show you how I did the nails on the right and this marble technique that I've seen on social media. So if this interests you just keep on watching. So as always, I'm going to start off by pushing the proximal nail fold back and my cuticles needed a lot of work for some odd reason. I do cuticle, I do cuticle, <laughs> I do cuticle. Oh my goodness. I do put cuticle oil on at least twice a day, but uh, yeah, I'm not too sure why they were so haggard looking. Anyway, before I get into explaining what I'm doing, if you are new here, Welcome. I hope you enjoy the content that I put up on my channel. This video, when I started filming, I don't know what was going on. It was almost like the lights were too bright for me and I have my lighting the exact same setting every single video. Maybe some slight adjustments, whether I'm doing a watch me work or a product review video, but I couldn't see. And it, and it wasn't the fact that the lights were bright, but they were bothering me and I found out after that I had, this is going to sound weird, I had a migraine and it wasn't a painful migraine, but it was a migraine that affected my eyesight. So it's almost, I call those silent migraines where it's not painful, but you have a hard time seeing like bright lights irritate you and I could not focus. And as you will see in this video, my head gets in the way because I'm as close as I can get with my glasses on and I just could not focus. I couldn't see. It was uncomfortable. So I apologize that this video isn't up to par as I would like to see it, but I hope you enjoy this anyway. This was, yeah, I'm going to say that even though this design that I'm going to show you was an easy design, I really struggled with it just because of my eyesight and that stupid migraine I had. Okay, on to explaining what I'm doing in the video. I am using my five in one carbide bit from Timu and I'm just taking the product off as in the color, not the hard gel. Because there, I don't have a whole lot of growth, there wasn't, I didn't want to take a lot of the bulk off because it was nicely shaped and it was balanced. So I just wanted to take the color off and then just do a quick infill. This cuticle pusher, I also found cuticle pusher, oh my God. You'd think I'd had a migraine in the mouth. <laughs> this cuticle bit is a cuticle pusher and exfoliator all in one. So you could also use this in reverse, which you will see me doing. I will go in reverse. This is something that I haven't done in past years is put my e-file in reverse and go around the right side of my nail. I've been seeing that a lot and I tried it and now I know why. You get a much cleaner exfoliation when you do that. So when you're doing your cuticle work, start at the center, go to the left, put it in reverse, and then go to the right. And if you're left-handed, just do it the opposite way. And here I'm using a large ball. This is a diamond bit in a fine grit and just getting rid of all that loose skin that's on top. I'm not comfortable cutting my cuticles at all or my clients, so I'd rather use this bit, pull the skin back and just get all that loose skin exfoliated. And then with a medium grit zebra sanding band, I will go in and take off any lifting that might be on the nail from the nail enhancement, which there isn't any with what I use and any remnants of the cuticle on the nail plate next to the proximal nail fold, just buffing that off as well and prepping the natural nail all in one. <laughs> Thank you. 
Then with a fine cone barrel bit, this one's from Light Elegance, I will go in underneath the nail and get rid of any ridges that there might be. You know, I've started doing this before I put the product on for the infill and it saves a lot of time. I was I would always forget this step and do it after the product and the color had been on and then you run the risk of this bit kind of going around the nail and scratching the top coat off and just creating more steps and more time added to your service. So I started doing this before I put the product on and it's actually saved, probably chopped off about five minutes from my time. And after I put my primer on, I go in with a small bit of tack from Light Elegance, scrub it into the natural nail. I don't need to put it over the whole nail and I will cure for 30 seconds. Okay, this product from Magic Gel Silicone Thin Base is fast becoming a favorite product of mine. You need very little. I will put this on the natural nail and just sort of feather it up towards the free edge. I have diamond fiber on my nails already, so I don't really need to put it all the way to the free edge, but sometimes I do. And then I will cure for one minute. So now I'm gonna go in with diamond fiber. This is my ultimate all-time favorite builder gel out of everything I've tried in nine years this is my go-to I absolutely love this and I've now switched all my clients over to this product short nails long nails it doesn't matter this combination of the silicone thin base and diamond fiber I get no lifting it's so durable and strong and it's cool curing as well and yeah this is where you're gonna see a lot of my head in the way because I just could not see my my eyes were just not doing what they're supposed to do and the, the lighting was really bothering my eyes as I mentioned earlier in the video so again I apologize I'm putting a slip layer on my nail and then going in with a very tiny bead and moving it towards the free edge kind of getting it as perfect as I can so I can do very little filing and curing for I'll do anywhere from a minute to two minutes depending on the size of my bead and by this point, my eyes were starting to actually hurt. So I did all my filing off camera and we are just gonna go straight into the color. I chose Electric Blue from Magic Gel, their MLAC gel polishes. I used this on a client uh, not too long ago. I forgot I even had this and fell in love with this. This is a beautiful electric or cobalt blue. You could get away with one coat with this color, but I I did do two coats and I did cure for 30 seconds in my LED light. Now I'm going in with number 193 from Ugly Duckling. This is a milky white and it's a translucent or trans, yeah, translucent color. So this is a great one if you're gonna do some baby boomer nails. I like this one just because it was a soft sheer look and I'm doing one coat and curing for one minute. Okay, so here I'm putting the second coat just on the middle finger. And at this point, I was very scattered. I had a hard time not only focusing with my eyes, but focusing with my brain just because I couldn't see that well. So I'm putting a thin layer on and I'm not going to cure it. And then with my ceramic tile, I'm gonna place lines of colors that I wanna use 
onto the ceramic tile with a space in between because in between each color I'm going to place a white and I'm using all gel polish because it's a soak off I don't want to mix a gel polish with a hard gel just because I prefer the colors <laughs> so I am using all gel polish at this point and don't worry I do clean my brush before I put the brush back into the bottle. This white from Ugly Duckling is so pigmented, there's no way I wanted to contaminate it. <laughs> and I probably should have done this prep work of putting the gel polish down first before I put the 193 on my nail because I was worried about having the gel polish run into my sidewalls, but it didn't. And then I am using a pointy toothpick and dragging the colors together. As you can see here, you can use a detailer brush if you don't have a toothpick. And then I'm going to pick up the color with a brush that I got off of Timu. I thought I would give this angle brush a try and it worked quite well. So I'm going to drop this bunch of colors into the uncured 193 on my nail and just lightly float the colors down the nail and just kind of playing around with it until I get the look that makes me happy. <laughs> And I'm trying not to use too much of the product because you are, you do have a lot of product on the brush and I don't want the nail to be bulky as I'm placing this marble goodness <laughs> out on the nail. I want to go as thin as I can. If you happen to be a little thick, put a top coat on, lightly buff it, and then re-top coat again. And that will smooth everything out. So I'm going in with a toothpick. You can use a liner brush and just kind of moving the colors to make it look a little bit more cohesive. Although marble isn't really cohesive, is it? It's just every time you do it, it's different. <laughs> then after a complete one minute cure, I'm going to go in with this foil from Nail Time. They are a nail art distributor in Vancouver, British Columbia. And okay. Pro tip here, guys, if you have foil like this, prep this ahead of time before you do your nails because you can't separate the foil or break it up if you've got the inhibition layer still on your nail. It will just stick to it and you'll have foil all over your nails where you don't want it. So do this beforehand. And this is a perfect example of why I was saying my head just was so scattered. I just was not organized enough. I put gel polish on when I shouldn't have. I forgot to put gel polish on and you didn't see that part because I cut it out and I didn't break up the foil beforehand. So yeah, I, this is what I mean by I struggled with this set. So after I get the foil placed where I want it, I will, if I'm wearing gloves, I will just take my finger and press the foil into to the inhibition layer and then I will cure for another 15 to 20 seconds but I didn't wear a glove so I'm using this rubber spatula here just to press it in. Then I'm taking a q-tip with alcohol and just getting rid of any foil that sort of flew around and landed where it shouldn't have landed and by doing those two steps once you put the top coat on you're not going to contaminate the top coat with the foil and you're not going to drag the foil through the inhibition layer. So press it down before you stick it back into the light and cure for another 10 to 15 seconds. That will keep the foil in place. At least that has worked for me. So now I'm just using the Tackless Hyper Shine, coating my nails with a thin layer and curing for one minute. And here's the finished look. It almost looks like I have a, an ocean nail design. <laughs> I didn't plan on that, but it, that's kind of what it reminds me of. And then off camera, I use the daddy oil, cuticle oil on my cuticles, the age defying hemp lotion on my hands and the watermelon scent fusion finish, which I am obsessed with. <laughs> I love their fusions watermelon cleanser. And this is just a nice light watermelon fragrance. Very refreshing scent when you use fusion finish as your last step. 
So what do you guys think? Have you tried this design before, this marble look? If you feel like sharing your process in the comment section, please do that. I would love to know how you've done this design, if you've done it. And if you also have any questions, please comment them down below and I'll do my best to answer them all. And I think that is it. Don't forget to follow me on all my social media. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button, the like button and comment if you you like. I would like to know where you're from, if you're new to my channel, anything. I love reading your comments, you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This one was kind of fun, even though my head was just not in it, literally. <laughs> Actually, it was in it, wasn't it? <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna stop here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye guys!